It's been almost three years and the Fukushima nuclear power plant is still making headlines, though often it's for the completely wrong reasons. Hey people, Trace here, setting the record straight for DNews. If you go on Facebook or Tumblr or Twitter or wherever and you look for information on Fukushima, you're gonna run into a lot of lies and myths. Journalism is here to make sure that the truth is being delivered, not rumor and conjecture. That's where social media comes in. We've gathered some examples to debunk some of these Fukushima, Fuku-ups, if you will. You might have heard Fukushima was leaking radioactive water into the ocean at a rate of about 300 tons a day. It made its way around social media, usually accompanied by a map, which I think we've got somewhere. There we go. This map doesn't measure radioactivity at all. Note the legend, it says centimeters. This is a real map from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, but it's measuring tsunami waves from the March 2011 earthquake, not radiation seepage over time. 300 tons may sound like a lot, but in comparison to the ocean, it's not that much. Mostly, the experts are worried about fish immediately around the plant, not on the beaches of California or Mexico or Canada. Even the Hawaii State Department of Health has been monitoring their water for radioactive material, and they are way closer than the Western Americas. And they've got nada, zip, zero, nothing. The reason is, it's been more than two years. The Fukushima plant's water runoff has not only been diluted into the ocean, 300 tons per day sounds like a lot, but since we know a gallon of water weighs just over eight pounds, 300 tons is 71,895 gallons, which is only about 1,500 bathtubs full of water. Not many in comparison to the 187 quintillion gallons in the Pacific Ocean. Radioactivity also decays constantly. When it decays in half, that's called a half-life, the cesium isotope CS-134 decayed more than half already, and the iodine radioactivity reported by Fukushima has a half-life of only like eight days. So the original leaks have decayed a lot since 2011. National Geographic reported back in September that the head of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution for monitoring the radiation in sea life said, and I quote, Eat up! Back in the US, Professor Eric Norman of Berkeley did find radioactive material from Fukushima in California rainwater, but it came from evaporated ocean water that rains down on us. Is it enough to hurt? Nah. It's the same issue that we would have with anything else, and Pacific evaporation is kind of a huge amount of water. The bottom line is, the Fukushima disaster was not good. It was pretty bad, but it was not the worst ever, and it severely affected the people around the plant killing a dozen right away, but should we be afraid here in the United States, Canada, Mexico, and other places? We should not. Earthquakes of eight or higher magnitude hit only once about every year since 1900, and the chances of another Fukushima are really, really low. But still, this week the Japanese government opened a windmill power generator off of the coast of Fukushima Daiichi to finally restore power to the devastated area in the wake of multiple meltdowns of Fukushima disaster. And the Fukushima disaster has implications far, far into the future for nuclear power, so we'll just have to see what happens. But recently, the UK has committed to building the very first new nuclear power plant in the EU since the disaster, so at least we're moving forward. But what do you think about this? Tell us in the comments and subscribe for more DNews every day.